good afternoon. Welcome to episode 982. <laughs> I didn't track my numbers when I put it in there. Um, today we'll talk a little bit about what drives you. And in particular, are you driven by um, goals and rules? Or on the other hand, by desires and... The other one slipped out of my mind. <laughs> There's two categories, I'll break it down more simply than that, because I'll give you the ones and the others and you can choose between the two yourself. And I'm gonna apply this to life in general as well as also to relationships. So, as you know, my if you've been watching my broadcasts, I do talk a lot about love and relationships, but my work's been shifting a lot now to balance self-support, self-love, self-care, and a lot more things like that, as you may have noticed. And as I'm also in the middle of writing copy for my, my collaborative mastermind, my friend Katie, things have been coming up in my writing that will give me some new insights, new thoughts and perspective to talk about. And this is one of them. So speaking about this goal driven, rule driven, um, achievement crushing focus, which is very California, I think the crushing part is definitely California. There's a lot of people who are driven by that to think that's the way that life's supposed to go. So when it comes to relationships, to career, to jobs, to sports, to anything, it's all driven by this framework, this structure, this limited, this, oh, give it, give it away, this limited, I didn't say it out loud, way of doing things. When you're driven by, I should say, when you're focused, driven by desire, by intention, by love, by wisdom, it's a very different animal, so to speak. So let me speak that more clearly. And I don't want to give too much away because some of it I'm saving for the mastermind that we're launching in about two weeks. Two weeks? Three weeks, almost, almost three weeks. <laughs> so it's on the table. So on one side of the coin, there's a focus and it's trained into us by the culture we live in in the world. That to have standing in the world, to have status in the world, to be respected in the world, you have to achieve certain things. And in the area of relationship, it's always looked upon, or has been looked a lot, a lot, not so much nowadays, but it has been for many years, that if you are married with kids, you're a better person than if you're single and don't have kids. That's the way the culture was set up. And if you don't don't try, don't know that, do some research, check into it. Because for me, I've become very clear about that, having been single and not having kids, and not choosing to have kids at this point. I'm, I mean, not not planning to have kids at this point in my life. I may have kids with my future partner who may have kids already, but I'm not going to procreate myself. It makes sense. So the rule structure and the comparative drives we have, which are really ego driven, by the way to have certain results, to have certain things happen in our lives, are largely influenced by inherited beliefs, inherited rules, inherited from, well, inherited by the way, either from society or from family, because they both influence us. So your goals for career may be driven by the way your parents were, or the way that your peer group or your society set things up for you. The realization though, is you don't have to do that. I should say, I should say the epiphany can be you don't have to do that, the other side of that can also be the trauma because you may go th people have gone through midlife crisis, um, an existential crisis to say the least, where they don't, it's like they're looking at life going, is this all there is? Where the paradigm shift is to recognize that what, what there is is inside, not outside. And I'm gonna frame that differently in a moment. So on one side of the coin, we're very much driven by and focused on the rules that we're set up to live by, by the culture we live in, by our upbringing, by our family, etc. And some of those rules are good, but most of them are limiting. I'm not going to say bad, but they're limiting, just to be clear. On the other side of the coin, there's the freedom to choose. Choosing from a place of desire, intention, heart, wisdom, etc. And when you understand the two difference, it changes the whole paradigm of how you live your life. Most people in the dating apps and the dating world are doing the former, not the latter. The, the, excuse me, the former, not the, I'm really trying to, where to put my hands. <laughs> I don't know which way I was putting my hands. The the goal driven requirement, the the, the almost um, it's funny. Um, Alison Armstrong used the term instinctual. I wouldn't use it in this term. It's more about driven by rules, by structure, by framing, by what we're supposed to do to have results. And personally, personally, I feel that's what's been destroying most people's lives. As I said, people have existential existential crisis, midlife crisis. They they cheat on their, fa their partners, they go through different things where they're basically acting out this feeling of being trapped, being controlled, which is what that first format is. 
the opportunity I'm offering or the recommendation I'm offering is a second choice, which is about being driven by desire, by intention, by heart, by wisdom, etc., etc. But most of us aren't raised with that. Most of us are, are raised by, we have to achieve something by comparison with. I remember vividly myself as a teenager, I have a, I have a cousin, I'm not sure he's still around, I haven't spoken to that side of the family in many, many years, but a cousin who was three months, I want to say younger than me, I could be wrong. It was a long time ago. Anyway, in teenage years, what was happening is, as, as we got through our 16, 17th birthdays, I was looking at colleges I'm going to go to and what I was going to achieve based on my grades and everything from school. This is back in England, so a different education system, by the way. He was being given jobs and given access to things because of his family connections. Now, our families weren't that close. Different, different, different uh, folks in the family. But there was a constant, constant comparison going on. And frankly, at times, I felt at that time, the teenager wasn't very aware, I was feeling a bit miffed about this. They were pissed off, to be blunt. I was like, he's getting everything he wants, he's been given everything, he's not going to do the work for it. Meanwhile, I've got to go to work and dip my grades and do all this stuff. Now, looking back, I'm very grateful for the path I chose because it got me here. But at the time, I was looking at it through the lens of comparison and it being unfair because I had to work hard to get what I wanted and he was being gifted everything. And that comparison was part of what wedged a lot, put a wedge between our families in a lot of ways because the way those two parts of families, my family and their family, was compared or, or running. Now, you may have the same experience in your own relationship with your family and other people, but the thing I want to talk about here is that we sometimes run life not for what we want, but how we have to compete, achieve, and be equal to other people, which is a disparate way of doing things. And it's a trap to do it that way. So on the other side of the coin, being driven by desire, by intention, by wish, by heart, by love, etc., 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 is a place where you choose for yourself. And qualifying, you're choosing from a place below the neck, so to speak. We are largely built, largely driven, by the world around us being ego-driven. Hence that goal-driven, egocentric focus. Stepping away from that, stepping into a place which is much more... Um, in simple terms. I want to say heart-centered, but it's more than that. It's autonomous. It's also aligned to our spirit, to our soul, to our beingness, our full self expressing. When we do that, when we have that as our focus, then life becomes much easier. In fact, the great thing about that is when you're doing that, what other people do or don't do, what other people think of you or don't think of you, is none of your business. You don't really care. That was paraphrasing Ellen Roosevelt, by the way. But the thing is, when we understand that we have freedom to choose what we want to do, freedom to decide for ourselves what we value, what we want to have, that's not based on other people's rules, then life gets a lot easier. And for those people who've gone through um, midlife existential crisis, this is a wake-up call to say, you don't have to do that anymore. In fact, you have more opportunity now than ever, because of the way the world is set up, to diverge from the path everyone else is going on. You can leave the, you can leave the herd, so to speak, and forge your own path, much more easily than you could about 20 years ago, 30 years ago. So the question is, why aren't you? Yes, I'm accusing you of not doing it. Now, if you are doing it, forget I'm saying this, but if you're not doing it, here's my question for you. What do you... Oh, hang on, two questions came up. Let me see which one I want first. If you're not choosing your own path and you'd rather stay in the herb where it's safe, what is it you're afraid of, first of all? Secondly, how safe are you really? Because I mentioned to me in the herd is kind of feeling safe. That's a false premise, by the way. And I've talked about this in other times about safety. When you feel like you're safer in the herd, that's a bad assumption. But that, well, let me say another way. That's an inaccurate assumption, the free way we're putting it. We get caught up in the paradigm of believing that if we stay amongst the crowd, nobody will notice us and be safe there. At least maybe that's one of my beliefs. Maybe it's not yours, but I think it is. The rules we're driven by are outside of our choice. When we choose to diverge from the herd, we leave the herd and do our own thing. It can feel like, because we've been told so many times, that if you leave the safety of the herd, you're in great danger. You're gonna be, you should be scared and you won't be safe. I don't agree with that. I believe now more and more it's a better place to be. Now, maybe it's just the wiring I have. I mean, I've, I've been doing some reading on my human design chart and definitely discovered I being, being unemployable and being a, um, a leader in my own work is actually where I'm supposed to be based on my human design. But my point to make to you this way is for most of us, 
having freedom to choose what you want, whether you do choose intentionally to be in the herd, because a lot of people are in the herd without thinking about choosing. They're driven by safety, they're driven by, actually driven by false sense of safety, and by a fear that if they leave the herd, something bad will happen. They're not really choosing from a high choice. That's the ego, um, limited way of being driven. When you step free into another paradigm, when you step free into another expression, when you step free into choosing for yourself what you want to do, which may or may not be in the herd, so to speak, that mentality, then you have autonomy. And then you have fulfillment, and that's what I'm talking about. I was writing about today. I mentioned at the beginning, I've been talking about, um, I've been writing rather notes about the new invitation for this new mastermind. And one of the keywords is fulfillment. And fulfillment comes from freedom of choice. Fulfillment comes from autonomy and ownership of who you are. And if you're not feeling like you have freedom of choice, if you don't feel I have autonomy, we need to talk. I want to tell you more about my mastermind. I'm not going to tell you about it here, but send me a message and I'll tell you more about that. Because it's coming up the end of the, uh, towards the end of the month. And I'm, I'm in collaboration with my friend Katie and we're putting together quite a potent mastermind. Although, I don't know, I don't know if mastermind's the right word. Anyway, I'll tell you more about that another time. So you can message me for more information. You can get on the early bird list for that and find out more about it. So, here's some details about this choice point you have. Check inside every time, if you want. Something comes up for you when you have a choice point show up. Because you may be noticing that you look back at your history and you've been making choices without thinking about it. Making choices automatically. And the truth is, the opportunity is to make choices intentionally, consciously, and individually for what you want to do or not do. So when you get to that choice point, here's your thought. Or here's my invitation to you. Is to stop when you get there. Actually stop in your thinking. And if you're in the way going somewhere and you just do it by default, just stop your mind thought. You may soon keep going, you may be driving or something, but if you want a chance to stop your thinking and say, hang on a second, why am I choosing this? What's really underneath it? And this is the big part, by the way. This is the, uh, this is the big key to what I'm talking about. If you can ask yourself clearly the question, what is my intention here? What is it I'm looking to get? Why am I choosing this? And you get down to the real answer at the below, which it might be about safety, it might be about security, it might be about fear, it might be about fitting in. When you know what that choice is, you can still make the choice, but know why you're doing it. And if you're noticing the default choice you're making is one out of safety versus having what you really want, it may be time to make a different choice. And that's a lot what we're going to talk about in the mastermind. So, just I want to put in the comments. Um, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, I do do it. I've always put a link in the comments of some next step, a call to action, a suggestion for you. I'm going to put my. I know I'm going to. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Jumping ahead here. So, to put this um, succinctly, simply put, a large part of this work, a large part of this understanding is to come back to yourself. As I mentioned, it's like moving from the head down to the heart, moving below the neck. And part of that is to remember that you're worthy of this. Part of it is to remember. The freedom to choose, it doesn't require you to follow the path of everybody else. And part of it also is to remember to take care of yourself, loving yourself, appreciating yourself, and respecting yourself. So as a first step to that, I recommend you take out my, my self-love meditation. Yes, I'm promoting it for a reason. Because when you start to really recognize that you've been running life externally referenced, always driven, always making things for other people, always satisfying the rules out there that aren't yours, you might realize that maybe you've been neglecting your own self-support. And one of the best ways to start self-support is to love yourself first. So in the comments, I'll put a link to my self-love meditation. It's two audio meditations and a workbook. There's an AM and a PM, different ones. They're both different. They have different aspects in it. My voice guiding you to meditate in a place of self-love, self-support, and self-recognition. And a bunch of other things too. So that, that link will be in the comments for you to check out after I sign off. So take advantage of that. Um, I'm also curious to hear from your thoughts. What do you think about this? If this has been provocative to you or if it's just simply going yeah I already do this let me know I'm, I'm quite willing to hear the feedback on this and again if you have any questions about the mastermind message me I'll send you more information about it afterwards so um, that's my daily talk for today if you haven't seen my broadcast before this is my daily Facebook live I do seven days a week right here on my personal page on Facebook which is um, Barry Selby and usually at 5 p.m. Pacific time you can join me every day if you haven't seen my broadcast before the replays are definitely available for you to watch on my business page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby, the author, I have a YouTube, I have, um, well, I put them all up there, but Facebook doesn't show them all. So there's about two or 300 available to watch. If you want to see all my broadcasts, because Facebook doesn't show you all of them, 
then I invite you to go visit, actually, back up a second, like my business page, Barry Selby, author, please. If you want to get to see all the broadcasts, go to my business, my uh, YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash user slash Barry Selby. Subscribe to my channel and you can look on there for playlists, which is messages from the masculine, where there's a whole range. Every single one of these talks is listed from newest to oldest. And you can just scan through the titles, search for keywords and get where, get where you want to go to find out what, what will help you most. A lot of my talks are about love and relationship, but a lot of them also are about self-support, self-love and self-care, which is one of these. So with that, I thank you for watching. I think it's given you enough to work with. Again, link in the comments for my self-love meditation, message if you want more help, and let me know in the comments what you think. That's three things to work on, but definitely start with self-love. So with that, I thank you for watching. I appreciate you being with me as always. And I'm back in tomorrow, same time, same channel. And uh, as always, please take care of yourself. I'll see you again tomorrow.